is about I'm the science and maths of the algebra. So today I'm going to do a video on college algebra. The topic I'm going to do today is going to be exponential functions. Last time I did like functions how to solve functions like g sub of f and f sub of t. So today what I'm going to do is exponential function. The first thing I'm going to do what is an exponential function. How to know if something is an exponential function. And the second part I'm going to do the graph of exponential function so that's what everything i'm going to do today okay the final is going to be the week after next so i just want to see like everybody can make sure that they know like when exactly is the final kind of get the final schedule or maybe whatever like the teacher said the final is going to be at what time try and maybe put a note down so that you will not miss it try by all means and get every information about it the time the date and when exactly it is where exactly it is going to happen. So make so do that before this one, before the end of, maybe if you couldn't do it this week, before the end of, end of next week, you should be able to do, do that day. And during the day, day two, during Tuesday, maybe I will not be here on Friday, but on Thursday, I will be at the National League. If you get like any problem regarding the finals or maybe any college algebra problem that you want, you can just come up there. I will be there on Thursday from 8 a.m. in the morning to 11 a.m. and from 12.30 p.m. to 4, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So just be there, I'll be willing to help if you get any problem with college algebra. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start today exponential functions. I'll go with that. Okay, I'm going to start exponential functions. That's what I'm doing today. Exponential function, what is an exponential? How to know if something is an exponential function and the, and the graph of exponential function. Okay, exponential function is any function in the form of f of x is equals to ca to the x. ca to the x. Such that this c is not equals to zero. This a is not equals to zero. And it's not negative this is should not be equal to zero the a should not be equal to zero or negative or it should not be equal to one two so that a is greater than zero and a is not equal to a is not equal to one so a is going to be greater than zero and a is not equal to one. Why a is not equal to one is that whenever like c is one, if you put if a is equal to one here, it means everything you put there is just going to be one. So it's not going to be an exponential function. There will be nothing like a growth or anything like that. Because if I put one here, it's going to be one raised to the power x. If I put, if x is anything, that's going to be one. Like if x is a thousand, it is still going to be one. If x is a million, it is still going to be one. So that's why it's such that a is not equal to one, a cannot be one, a cannot be negative. So a have to be between zero and one and between one and infinity, but it's not one, it's not zero and it's not negative. So the c cannot be zero because if c is zero, it means everything here is going to be zero. So c cannot be zero. If c is zero, it means it's gonna multiply, everything is going to be zero. And the x two, the x2, if the x is 1, it means it's not going to be an exponential growth. Because if x is equal to 1, if, if x is equal to 1, that is just like the basic form. So x is a number that is going to play with here. X is going to, x can be like from 0, 1, 2, 3, negative. Like, it's, it's not just going to be one number. Like, x is equal to 1 or just x is equal to 0. Just stay there. X is going to vary. So that's why it's x here. Like, it is a variable. It means we can stick in one there, we can stick in two there, three, four, five, like any number. So the, the only thing to know is that C cannot be equal to zero, A has to be greater than zero, and A cannot be equal to one. So those are the factors that you look at. Anything you get that follows this rule I said here is called an exponential function. So that's how to, to recognize an exponential function. A function in the form of C A to the X, while X is a variable, a 
has to be greater than zero and a is not equals to one. A has to be greater than zero and it's not equals to one and c is not equals to zero. That is called an exponential function. Okay, this is how, now anything you see, if it is an exponential function, you will be able to know. Like if I say e to the x, it's an exponential function because a is here like if c is going to be like c is going to be one, a is going to be equal to two, which is not one, which is not negative. So that's why and we get x here. So this is an exponential function. If you get 100 raised to the power x, it's an exponential function. If you get one over four raised to the power x, this is not one, but it's between zero and one. This is an exponential function. So that is how to recognize an exponential function. Anything that is raised to the power x, while the coefficient here you get is not zero, it's not negative, the a here is not negative, it's not zero, and it's not this thing, how do you call it? It's not equals to one, that is an exponential function. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do how to draw the, how the graph of an exponential function looks like. So the graph of an exponential function, here I'm going to do two cases, where the exponential function is between zero and one. When the exponential function is between zero and one, and when it is between one of the, when it is between one of the infinity. So between zero and one, it means most likely is going to be like a kind of a fraction in which the denominator, like one over four, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. That is going to be when it is less than one. Sometimes it cannot be a fraction. It can be like a decimal and stuff, but whenever it is between zero and one, it's going to be like a different case than when it is more than one. Because when it is zero, between zero and one, like if you get one over four, whenever you get x here, as x increases, this four is going to increase like way more than this one is going to do. Like we get one here, sometimes it can be two, but the four is going to increase way. So we get one here, it has to be, it cannot be two. If this thing was two, yeah, it's still going to be one over two. It's going to be like an exponent between zero and one. So whenever it is between zero and one, if you stick like anything for the x here, this four is going to increase like exponentially. So it's going to increase way more than this one is going to do. So it means this number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But if it is like maybe like two, if we put x here, this number is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the difference between these two. When it is between zero and one and when it is between one and infinity. But it cannot be one, it cannot be zero. So when it's between one and infinity, this is going to keep on increasing and increasing and increasing. This one is going to keep on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'm going to do the graph of both cases where it's going to get smaller and smaller and where it's going to get bigger and bigger. But no matter what, how this thing gets smaller, it can never be zero. So zero is like the horizontal action, so it can never be zero. So I get some graph papers here. I'm going to go ahead and do the graph of, I'm going to look at the examples in the book, like the ones they did, so that if you study it, you can like understand it from that. So the book, what they did is two to the, I will write it out here first. What they did is the graph of two to the x, f of x is equal to two to the x. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick in numbers for two x. X is like a variable, so it can be different numbers and find the corresponding values of f of x, which we're gonna put on the y-axis and draw and graph, the graph and see if what I say, if it is between the numbers, a is between one and infinity, it's gonna increase and increase. Let's see if that is gonna happen here on the graph. Okay, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put like x between, maybe I'm gonna start negative eight to positive eight, or maybe that is even, I would just say, I'll start at negative eight to maybe positive 24 and put like four in between the, this thing and put like four, four, the four between the two, this one, between the two f of x. So what I'm gonna do, I'll put f of, I'll put the x here and put the corresponding f of x. So if, if I put x for negative eight, this thing is going to be two raised to the power, two raised to the power negative eight, which is the same as one over two to the eight. So two to the eight, that's two times two dot up to eight times. Let me see that sum. I'm gonna calculate it right here. Two to the eight is going to be mm,
Okay, it really is 256. Usually negative 8 is 256. So that's going to be 1 over 256. So 1 over 256, that's going to be like a really small number. 1 over 256, that's going to be a really small number. So the next one I'm going to put negative 4. Usually negative 4 is, is the same as the same as 2 to the negative 4 is the same as 1 over 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4 is 16, so it's the same as 1 over 16. So you see how it is jumping from 1 over 256 to 1 over 16. So the next one is going to be 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. Any number to the 0 is 1. Any number to the 0 is 1. So the next one I'm going to stick in is 4. So 2 to the, two to the 4 is 2 to the power 4 is 16. So I will stick in 8. 2 to the 8 is I said 24, but it's going to be like a way bigger number. So I'm just going to stay at 8. I'm just going to stay at 8, from negative 8 to 8. So 8 to the, 2 to the 8 is 256. So see what we get. We get 1 over 256 to 1 over 16 to 1 to 16 to 256. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the graph. So the graph, I would say that is the x-axis. And that is the y axis which is the same as f of x so here i will put here zero i'll go four and eight for the x i'll go zero zero here okay the eight should be here so the next one i'll go zero i'll go negative four and negative eight so the y is going to be like a really big number. So probably maybe I should have taken this down a little bit, but it's still all right. I'll, I'll just manage it this way. Okay, I'll put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. I'll put a hundred here for y. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll put 200, one, two. Here will be like 250, so we'll get 256. So here the graph, I'm just going to like, if I'm plotting him, it's going to be like kind of like an estimation. So it will be like a lot, it will be like a really broad ex estimation because there's no way I can put like, I can make the coordinates really small because the number is going to be like a lot, a really big number. So here, what I'm going to do is plot in what I get here when I substitute for x. When I, x is negative eight, the f of x is one over, 256, which is like really close to zero. One over 256 is like a number that is going to be close to zero here. So that's just going to be around that end. But remember, this thing cannot be negative of y. The f of x can never be negative. The f of x will never be negative. It is only going to be like positive all the way up. So that's going to be this point here. So one over 16, that's negative four. That's like really close to zero too. So that's going to be around that end here. So the next one we get is zero. Zero is going to be one. So I would say one is just going to be, I don't know probably this size, maybe even, but I would just say it's going to be around here, one. Because it's like a broad estimation, so it's kind of going to be like a lot closer. So I will go to four. When I stick in four, I get like from one, it jump up to 16. So 16 will be around, let me say that's 100. So 150 going to be around here. So I would say 16 will be maybe around here. Like I'm just estimating, but I would say 16 is around here. 16 might be even less than that. 16 might be around here. So whenever I get eight, whenever I put in that eight, it will jump from that point. Eight, whenever I put in eight, what I get was 256. So 256 is going to come like all the way up here. That's 250. 250 should be around here. It's 250. So 256 will be around here. So yeah, if you want to put another number there, it's going to jump and come like all the way out there. So you see how the graph is going? You see how it's getting like from there, jumping there, there. And it is going like, so it's just going to continue like that. So if I connect the points, what I'm going to get is so it's going to look like all of it up. I'm just going to smooth go up. So 
So this is what an exponential graph of when it is between one and infinity. Like it cannot be one, but when it's like between greater than one to infinity. So that's going to be like really big. It's going to increase like really rapidly. So that's why it says exponential growth. So when something is growing like exponentially, it means it is like really going at a really fast way. At a really fast way, whenever the variable changes, that changes like really big. So this is when it is between one and that. So now let's go, the next one I'm going to do when it's between zero and one. So that's when it's going to be a fraction form. So when it's a fraction form, it's going to be like one over two, all raised to the power x, that's like f of x. Now the next thing I'm going to do is plot that one over two raised to the power x. So whenever I plot that, it's going to be, instead of like increasing like that one, this one is going to decrease because what is increasing is the number at the bottom here. That is what is increasing. The more this number is increasing, the more it is getting to zero. So the other one was getting like from really close to zero and it's going to like way up like this infinity. That's the first one I did. So the second one, instead of that, is going to get from a really small number it's going to get from like a really big number to like a really small number. The number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as we go, as we increase the X. So here I'm going to stick in the same numbers for that. The ones I did, I'm going to do the same thing for that. So here I'm going to put F of X here and put X here. So when I put negative eight for X, that's going to be one over two all raised to the power negative eight. So which is the same as one over Two to the negative eight. So one to the negative eight is the same as one. Like one to the anything is the same as that. So one to the negative eight is going to be that. So here, what we get for negative this one, what we get for negative eight, when we stick in negative eight for that, what we get was one over two fifty six. So I'm just going to put that one here. One over two fifty six. So here, if we multiply this thing out, it means this is going to be one. It's just going to be one over that times 256 over one. So it's, this thing is going to be 256. I'm going to confirm that and see if that is right. Put it on the calculator. What I get on the calculator is, I don't think that is right. Okay, one divided by two to the negative eight. That's right, that's gonna be 56. I was putting it on my phone, but it's not calculating it right. But the right answer is, it's 256. That is one divided by, when I put negative eight there, two to the negative eight, that's going to be 256. So if I put negative four there, it's going to be one over two raised to the power negative four, which is the same as one to the negative four over two to the negative four. One to the anything is that. So one divided by two to the negative four, that is going to be 16. Because it's like one over one over 16, which is that. So if I flip and multiply, it's going to be one over one times 16 over one, which is 16. So that's going to be 16 here. So if I put zero there, it's going to be anything raised to the power of zero is one. So this thing is going to be one. So if I put eight there, if I put, sorry, four there, it's going to be one over 16 because it's going to be one over two raised to the power four, which is one over four over two over four. So it's same as one over 16. So if I put eight there, it's going to be 1 over 256. So if you look at this graph, you see what we get on top here is what we get down here. What we get down here is what we get on top here. So it's kind of like if you get, if the number is between 0 and 1, it's like a fraction, like it is greater than 0 but it's less than 1, that number is going to keep on decreasing. 
if you're adding as x increases if x increases that number will keep on decreasing like going down and down and down you see how x is increasing that number is just like decreasing so when it is greater than one when the number is greater than one whenever you stick in x there as x increases it is going to increase exponentially so here it is it is reducing exponentially here it is increasing exponentially that's the difference between the two graphs so you see the curve i get for the first one was kind of like a curve like that so let me do the second one and see what curve we're going to get so here too i'm going to put the same coordinates i'm going to put zero here i'm going to put one i'm going to put four here and put eight here put negative four negative eight so here what i'm going to put i'm just going to put 100 here put 200 here 250. so here when i plot the graph when i get on the paper what i get is negative 8 for x and f of x this one is the f of x that is the y axis this is x the x axis the x axis the f of x or the y axis so here, if I put negative 8, I get 256. So that's negative 8, I will get 256, which is going to be way up here. 256 is going to be about here. So if I put negative 4, I get 16. So 16 is just going to be around here. So if I put 0, what I get is 1. 1 is going to be around here. So when I put 4, I get 1 over 16. That's going to be really close to 0. That's going to be around here. When I put 8, I get 1 over 256. That's going to be really close to here. So this thing, when I draw the curve, the curve is... So whenever I draw the curve, it's going to be like this. You see how the curve is getting closer? But this curve will never be 0. It will never cross this line here. It was just going to get closer to 8. But it will never cross it. This line is called the, it's going to be the horizontal asymptote. So it will never be able to cross this line. That's kind of weird. It's going to get closer and closer, get closer and closer, but it will never cross it. It will never get there. It's kind of weird how you get closer to something, but you will never get there. So that's how this line is going to do to this line. It's going to get closer to it, but it will never get there. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the summary of the two I did. The, two exponential graphs I drew. The other one was when it is a fraction, when it is between zero and one, when it's like a fraction, one over two. When it is greater than zero, but less than one. Let me do it like this. Sorry. That is greater than, so it's going to be. Sorry, when zero is, when it is greater than, when the number is greater than zero, but less than one, the number is going to be greater than zero, but is less than one, that's how, what I do. Okay, I'm trying to fix this thing. Okay, when it is greater than zero and less than one, the graph is going to go like this. So it will not curve, it will just go straight like this. It means it, that part should not. It means it is just going to, from like really big to like get really small, like getting closer to zero. When it is, when the number is greater than one, but greater than one, let's just say greater than one, it is going to be like this. So this one is going to be like this. This one is from big to small. This one is going to get from small to big exponentially. Okay, that's going to be the end of the video today. If you get any question you on the third floor at the early center, just come down there. I'll be there. Like I'll be really willing to help. If you get any problem on college algebra before the final, just come down there.